we can do our thing. That's crazy, man. Just in the sky right yeah, now. Hey everyone, welcome back to another fun-filled podcast adventure, hooray! My name's Midnight Mike, and Cratchit is over there on screen. I am making these worse. Is that getting worse? Because I don't know. This I'm one's now not as clean as that one. What the hell is going on here? What sort of magic witchcraft is on these lenses? Uh, Joe is not here. He had an emergency. It. Uh, I, I. I don't feel comfortable saying any more than that until Joe wants to talk about it. But he had a, a, an emergency. And he could not uh, be here. He told us about uh, about three hours ago. So something, something came up. Something came up, and uh, hopefully we'll hear back from him real soon. Hope everything is a okay. Um, but uh, our thoughts are with him, and I wish he was here because I have. Yeah, where am I getting my news? Exactly. I have so many things I want to annoy him with, and uh, I would love to get his opinion on the current events, uh, what's going on today in the world. Uh, the same, I was saying this show before the show. I was like, I, I can't believe we we still uh, do this show. Yeah! It's crazy. What the fuck? It is amazing. Yeah. Like we're at episode twelve hundred and twenty six, and that's uh, we only for the past, I guess, maybe ten years, we have been doing a show twice a week. Before that, it was just once a week. Um, it is quite a journey, and it is it's very interesting to to think that this show started during the the Bush administration. It's crazy. It really is. Like I, the, I, the George H. W. Yeah, Bush administration yeah. in nineteen ninety one. No, 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 no. I don't think I was podcasting before podcasting. Yes, I could have been just talking into my tape recorder at home. You didn't have a pirate radio station. I did no. in junior high. No, I didn't. Got about 200 feet outside the house. Hmm. It's not bad. Wow. It is uh, It's amazing. Hats off to all you podcasters out there that make it over episode 100. Yay! It's not easy. It really isn't. Uh, it takes a lot of effort to, uh, to show up. It, a lot of people just can't show up. But uh, we make the effort. We show up. We try to prepare uh, a somewhat fun and entertaining uh, and maybe somewhat an informative whoa, whoa, show whoa, whoa, for everyone. Whoa, whoa. I wasn't on board with the fun. I, and I know. Part. I'm throwing your curveball here. That's what the show started off being, and it just turned into like a lot of current events, goofy malarkey, which I'm I like. I love. I love the malarkey. You know, I live for that. Joe Biden hates it. I love it. Hates malarkey. Uh, just to start things off here, before we get to Alex Jones clips a week, um, I'm trying to think of new ways to reach new audience. Since this is a podcast, we we use words and language to convey ideas and try to con- convince people that we're hip and with it and young, and uh, like the, the people who listen for the first time, like these guys have their finger finger on the pulse of of culture, and maybe we need to incorporate some some words, maybe some retro words that could help convince people that we are. Pretty, pretty dang cool, and uh, this is uh, this is something that uh, I think could uh, help convince people. So this is a a helpful guide for slang terms from the '90s because the '90s are back Ooh. in a big way, Cratchit. I'm not sure if you're aware. Are of this. they? Yes. When it comes to style, who and voted fa- on this? When it comes to style and fashion. 
Uh, there's a lot of the, the a mix of streetwear and the grunge look is pretty big with the kids. Um, my uh, my niece, one of my nieces, is really into ninety early nineties music like Weezer and Green Day. So uh, I think well, the 90s, Weezer didn't come out till nineteen ninety five. No, Weezer came out in uh, ninety one ninety two. Uh, per, well, I'm sorry, probably the Blue Album came out. In 1992 or 93. I'm gonna, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fact check.gov.com right now. Yeah, fact, please fact do. Fact everybody. While, while you do this, let's get hip with some awesome 90s slang so everyone can learn something and use this 90s slang at home or at the office. By the way, we were both wrong. It was 94. Here are some other phrases you want to know if you want to be sure to sound hip in the 90s. Yo, a greeting. Yo, Curb, what's up? Yo? In the 80s, it was just wasted. I don't know how many I had, but boy, did I get bucked. I sure felt that the next morning that was really the worst thing I'd ever done. I hope you didn't drive home. No way. MacGyver, as in the TV show where the impossible is often accomplished. Yo! I can't believe you got off that speeding ticket. What a MacGyver! Norville, <laughs> to secretly undermine. What? I can't believe she stole your job. You really been Norville. Black and Decker, or a real tough assignment. It's racist. You get the analogy, right? This job is a real grind. It's just a Black and Decker. Some what? phrases may be around forever. Well, look, I gotta run. Peace. Bye, Tom. One last word for words of the '90s. You gotta remember that hip slang changes rather quickly. So if you want to use any of these phrases, you better use them in a hurry. I mean, think of Bart Simpson. Cowabunga is dreadfully out of date, horribly out of style, and you don't want to appear bizotic. So, so is that dude's sweater vest? I, I grew up in the nineties, and uh, granted, none in of a, these a, were around in the nineties. In rel a relatively small town south of Akron, Ohio, but I never so you're heard saying you were born in a small town. Yeah, I was in a small town. <laughs> uh, but I never heard any of these terms besides yo. I heard I heard yo a lot. But when it comes to MacGyver or or instead of uh, wasted, uh, bucked, I got so bucked last night. No one used these terms. No, no one has ever said that. No one has ever said bucked. Boy, did I get bucked. <laughs> so how is, how is yo a 90s slang, which it predates that for decades probably, but even yo MTV raps came out in 1987. Yeah. Hey, yo. Or, or as a... Tim Poole said in 2000. But MacGyver also was big in the 80s. MacGyver is a TV show from the 80s. So why would you use a reference from the 80s as a slang term in the 90s? Hey, yo. Because these people are making shit up. I think they're just making stuff up. What the a Norville MacGyver. one is also bullcrap. Yeah, nor no one says Norville. No one. But I'm going to start. It has to do with Deborah Norville. I I'm think guessing. we're going to start using these in, in the. No. We'll tr just try to pepper them throughout the show. It's just a black and decker. We're going to try. That's, that's, I like that one because it's racist as hell. It certainly be taken that way. Uh, I don't think that's the way it was intended, but uh, however so you want to Norville use it. apparently refers to the change in style from Jane Pauley to Deborah Norville on the NBC Today show in 1989. So again, not the 90s. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. I do like that Black & Decker one. The Black Use that a lot. Like, yeah. Run that way into the ground. Okay. Uh, well, it is Wednesday, people. We are going to uh, do a little Alex Jones Clips of the Week. All right, here we go. We're gonna... I defer all my, my slang knowledge to Alex Jones. He is the master of slang. Mm -hmm. Master, uh, he's he's a he's a wordsmith. He's a he he likes words. He likes words. He's a yeah. Word I like words. I'm kind of a wordsmith guy. Kinda. But we're we're, we're going to go back to Thursday uh, of last week. Here we go, people. Let's have some fun. God put that in our hearts. I don't have time to sit around at Bucky's for an hour. I know nothing, nothing. And that's why we have breasts. That's why mammals have breasts. Whales have them. Horses have them. Cows have them. All mammals have them. And when females have it for a reason, that's what you're supposed to eat. Listen to Hulk Hogan. We have that little <laughs> stacky wacky. We just lost him. We'll uh, reconnect with him. This guy is awesome. We need to get him on the show more. He wanted to come on. Usually I have to try to get him on. Yeah, let's uh, get in the control room and uh, let's get uh, reconnected. Alex Jones is a big fan of breasts. 
You can, you know, you can, you can milk anything with breast. You can milk a cat. Good chicken. <laughs> I got big chicken problems on the property. Big chicken. Big problems. chicken breasts. Big chicken problems. Like too many chickens or not enough chickens? Got an angry rooster. Uh oh. Yeah. Here we go. Here's a, clip number two. Friday. I need to get glasses. My eyes used to be 2015, then they were 2020, and I can barely read that. But So if you don't want to get monkeypox, don't have sex with 50 people a month. So this is brutal, aggressive sex. InfoWars is now, as of yesterday, officially, I guess I'll make the announcement now, up for sale. They raped me with three outside accounting firms. Wow, so InfoWars is up for sale. That's incredible. I do understand there's an interested buyer, and he's already offered a price. Oh yeah, uh, I I I don't know if that's true. But this this see, I'll give you ten thousand dollars. Wow, and that's quite the low ball. <laughs> I think even even that's their computers insultingly low. Even their computers are worth more than that. Yeah, uh, we only have five hundred thousand dollar computers, not ten million dollar ones like Fox News and people. And we learned recently they actually have seventy thousand dollar computers now. So <laughs> uh, let's go to Monday. Here we go. Arrest Elon Musk. As the nurses partied and got drunk and had sex and did TikTok videos. Baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. You know, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Baby. We're going to sit here and take this crap. Oh, Taylor Swift's going to be there. And uh, we have Tuesday here, people. Here we go. Don't hang up, Mike. Harass waiters and ballet parkers and massage therapists and caddies and maids and everybody else i did naughty things well, okay there's so much info i get confused all right i can't even r- recognize a date on a sheet of paper that's what inbreeding does well joe is very stubborn we're gonna go to david mary joseph sean corn pop david mike <laughs> sean jake mary and robert whoa my glass is full <laughs> you're not supposed to marry your first cousins over and over and over again or maybe even your sister you're not supposed to marry your mom you've got to have hardcore sexual contact Right, with your, with your sister? What are you talking about? That's the way it was cut together. It kind of insinuated that, but I think that's a bad edit. I'm uh, <laughs> I just taking a guess there. And there we go. We got to Wednesday today. Boy, he's got the big elephant balls. The new world odor. She is on drugs and drunk in that club. Start having sex with males. The boys have vaginas. Two-thirds of Americans died during COVID. What's the goal here? Yes, Ken Paxton. Yes, <laughs> Some good clips. I have a lot to go through here and rotate in. That's what I'm going to do this weekend. I do like that he snuck in a little mini list of potential jobs for your uh, your inevitable guidance counselor sketch. He did. He got. Boy, did I get bucked. Uh, not, not that one. <laughs> oh, boy. A um, lot of things are going on in the news. Well, hey, that- before you move oh, on, sure. since, since we're in a uh, kind of a, a, a fun time, uh, let's play some media clips and have yeah. fun with it mode yeah uh thanks to uh steve o for posting this one it's floated around for a while steve uh steve o or steve o actually it's steve o h so yeah. maybe he's from ohio well, maybe or, steve from ohio i don't know but steve o um this is a version i just dropped that in carriage up it's a version of our favorite uh jonathan frakes uh list of problems okay i like it um yeah. But the, the conceit is it's been slowed down, and the, the prompt is, if you play that clip slower, it sounds like he's some random drunk guy at a bar asking you oddball questions. Yeah, this is Jennifer Franks right here. Not this time. We made this one up. It's a made-up right. tale. It never happened. But let's listen to John, Jonathan Franks slowed down. And maybe a little inebriated. We'll see. You ever walked out of a mall into a huge parking area and realized you'd forgotten where you parked your car? <laughs> ever gone mountain biking? What do you want to be when you grow up? What's the right tip? Have you called a plumber to your home lately? How superstitious are you? How much money would it take to make you spend a night? Cemetery. <laughs> you display this as a trophy. Do you have a pet? Do you have a sweet tooth? Do you believe in the power of a curse? Have you had your hearing tested lately? Planning a trip soon? 
Can you remember the tallest man you've ever seen? You love to go a wandering beneath the clear blue sky. Have you noticed what big stars real estate agents have become? Are you careful with your personal records? Does your computer ever seem to have a mind of its own? Have you ever visited a Chinatown section in a major city? <laughs> have you ever visited a flea market? Have you ever visited a truck stop? Did you ever have a job as a waiter? Have you noticed how many successful restaurants are theme-based these days? Have you ever... Have you ever... Ah, uh, really, really good stuff. <laughs> That's fine. And that is spot on of the guy who's had too much to drink and wants to come up and start a conversation yeah, with you. He just wants to bullshit with you about anything. I've probably been that guy at a bar once or twice in my life. I think we've probably all been that guy at some point. But <clears throat> Before I get on to some headlines here, I was going back through the uh, Lou Elizondo book, Imminent, the audio oh. book, and just, oh. try to, just trying to see if I could pick up any uh, interesting little tidbits here and there. It's things that are not being reported on maybe people maybe uh, people overlook this and I, I did come up with some clips here that people just seem to overlook here here is uh, something right here general james clapper i knew him from my days at odni i fucked him and i looked up to him wow that's what? an incredible Wait, what? statement <laughs> what I, I just i couldn't believe when i heard this i could not believe my ears i could not believe it uh, but then he, uh, he, he said this, this is incredible too. This all began when I fucked general James Clapper, my old boss at the office of the undersecretary of defense for intelligence, OUSDI was asked by president Barack Obama to become the new fuck boy at Clapper and Woods didn't always suck, suck. But when Clapper made the move to become the fuck boy, at, he offered Woods the job at DIA regardless. Well, I just incredible statements right there. I, when I heard this, I was shocked and I knew I had to share it with the world. And then there's this final uh, piece I, I, uh, I found of him uh, talking about uh, Mattis. There are only five people on the planet who I'd fuck. One of those individuals was the new Secretary of Defense, James Clean Sex Mattis. Or as his friends called him, <laughs> what? Paolo Roberto Jog de Miranda Uchoa. Just incredible pieces from the audiobook that people have overlooked. I just I couldn't believe James it. Clean sex Mattis. That's yeah, that's his cl clean sex Mattis. That's his. Uh, a lot of people say Mad Dog, but uh, according to Lou, it's clean sex Mattis. It's just crazy. It's insane. That is, a, that is a hell of a nickname to be tarred yeah. with. For the record, uh, I did edit those together. Now what? I I, no, I know it's shocking. It's shocking, and let me tell you, uh, I could have used AI, just cloned his voice, and used AI to. To do that, but no, I went through the audiobook and I had to construct that. He didn't say the word fuck in the book. I had uh. to I had to construct a, a word where he used F in the beginning of it, and then he talked he he referenced to ducking or he he said people ducked for some reason. I had to put them together and come up with that and then use it over and over again. This is how I spent my morning. Two hours of my morning is trying to get these things together here, people. Did you do it old school where you um, ran these off on two reel-to-reel uh, um, -reel tapes? No, I didn't. I didn't splice have my, them together. my task cam, eight tracks going and, and oh, splicing man. from one to the other. No, I used, I used Audacity for that. But um, it's just a little fun. I mean, hey, you can share that with uh, your friends and say, this guy, Lou, is going crazy, bro. He's saying some crazy shit out there. Well, but, that might get people to buy the book. Yeah, it will. You know what? I would read that book again if he talked like that. What if they released a version of the audiobook where they selectively censored certain words to create situations that didn't happen? Yeah, that'd be nice. And then you kind of, it's kind of like a reverse ad libs kind of thing. You like, you mm -hmm. let your mind go you wild. You mean ad libs? Yeah, what I say? You said ad libs. Ad libs. Which, mad libs. That's the, yes. that's the gag. Yeah. Um, let's do some headlines here because there's plenty of news to get to. There better be. It's bullshit. Go ahead, skin it. I'm gonna skin it. Skin that smoke wagon. 
see what happens. Skin that smoke wagon and see what happens. Skin that smoke wagon and see what happens. Yeah. I'm getting tired of your gas. Now jerk that pistol and go to work. All right. Talk about slang. Could, uh, I'm, my concern is if he said that to somebody in the 1860s, I think it was, 1870s. Yeah, I think so. I think the other guy might just be confused. Yeah. Like, what? It's just a black and decker. Wow. Yeah. It's just a black and decker, man. Leave it alone. Well, there is some uh, some big news out there, some Ooh. major news that is hitting the UFO community hard. Very hard. And book, is it? It, uh, it's, it's simply, uh, I think people are taken aback by this news. Uh, Pentagon's UFO office announces that it now has a new director. Yes, it has a new director. This is the AARO office that was previously occupied and ran by Dr. Kirkpatrick. Um, and he's the one who didn't want to be there. He was begrudgingly. He was there, and he every interview that I saw with him, every testimony they gave, it seemed like he was annoyed by the whole entire situation. Mm-hmm. And and afterwards, when he uh, officially was kind of stepping down, when he'd go to functions and, and talk about the AARO, he had a handler, a government handler with him pretty much all the time. Uh, now they have a new director. And I think uh, things might be looking up for us, or maybe not, because I believe Dr. Kurt Patrick was put in that position uh, to basically be Project Blue Book 2.0. And they either he chose to limit the scope of his investigation, or he was only given selective documents and evidence to so to lead him to certain conclusions. But the uh, according to this article, the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Re- Resolution Office, which investigates UFOs, is now under new management. It stems back in 2022 as the successor successor to the Pentagon's Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force, the UAPTF. Uh, the AARO has been headed up by the physicist Sean Kirkpatrick, who stepped down in December of 2023, leaving. Tim Phillips as the interim director. Now, in an official press release, the Department of Defense has announced that the new permanent director of the AARO moving forward will be Dr. John T. Koloski, a scientist with an ex- with extensive experience in several relevant fields, including quantum optics and crypto mathematics. Those both sound made up. Now this is a, a press. What's this guy's name? Doctor John Colossus. Uh, Doctor Koloski. Doctor John T. Koloski. Now that name sounds made up. This doesn't seem like it's this press release from uh, Defense.gov, or at least this abbreviated version, doesn't seem to really uh, dig in too deep. But luckily, John Greenwald of the Black Vault dug into this guy, and so we can see. Who this guy is. So uh, the official bio for Dr. John Koloski serves, uh, he currently serves now as the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office. Prior to, prior to that, he held technical and leadership positions within the Research Directorate of the National Security Agency, the NSA. In that capacity, he led advanced mission oriented research in the field of networking and computer, computer computing and served as a subject matter expert in the area of free space optics, advising various DOD agencies. In addition to his optics research in crypto mathematics, Dr. Koloski invented an advanced language agnostic search engine and served as the DOD Special Communications Enterprise Office. So they hired someone from the NSA, one of the most, like, uh, locked down intelligence agencies. I guess they're all pretty locked down, but um, I, in, I guess the the backlash here, if there is a, a, the, the skepticism, is that a lot of people, myself included, uh, believes that the person heading this office should be a civilian, should be someone not immediately connected with government, maybe hasn't recently served, maybe doesn't have. Uh, any kind of cronies in uh, the Defense Department or government, so they weren't. Maybe there won't be a conflict of interest when they go knocking on doors, and uh, they won't be doing favors to one agency or military contractor or the other. 
This guy, uh, he, by, all, by all accounts, seems extremely smart according to his background. But I think by just guilt by association, unfortunately, I, I can't trust him. I, I can't trust that he's going to do the right thing here. It's going to be Project Blue Book uh, 3.0 at this point, right? Maybe four? Maybe four. But it's uh, pretty concerning there. Um, so, yeah, he, he worked at the National Security Agency. So, uh, in that capacity, he led, uh, yeah, okay, I, I, I read that. So, uh, he's qualified for the job, but he might not be the most transparent when it comes to findings and uh, us getting to the bottom of the UFO phenomenon. Does he have any... Uh Anything on the record or anything previously he's talked about related to UFOs or UAPs? Uh, not that I saw. Um, I could, I'll have to dig in. Maybe he's given some talks at the NSA that are now public, but um, not that I know. Um, I, I guess when it comes to like how he was appointed, who, who he was appointed by, uh, I don't know those political maneuvers and the like the bureaucratic handshakes that, that go on there that's interesting to me like why was he chosen chosen his background seems to be mostly in computers and optics um pretty interesting for a person who should be analyzing aerial phenomenon and underwater phenomenon and poltergeists can walk around all that kind of stuff all these stories that get flooded in here is a computer scientist the best person to do it? Perhaps. I don't know. But you'd imagine you'd want somebody with a physics background. Somebody who uh, knows that if they see a, ve a vehicle doing certain maneuvers, that it is physically impossible. This guy's... Well, so his undergrad degree in math and physics from Cal State San Bernardino. Okay. PhD, from, PhD in electrical engineering from Johns Hopkins. Okay. Talks yeah, yes. a lot of electrical optics stuff, but yeah, I guess I that's know. good, right? Is uh, you want to well, see stuff? Seems how most of the UFO videos that get posted are just because people don't understand how cameras work. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, bullshit! And some goofy videos out there, but uh, yeah. I I'm just looking forward to the pile like, of oh, bullshit. Look at the UFO. I'm looking forward to the pile of bullshit that uh, this guy is uh, is going to feed us. He might, and he, he might be the nicest guy in the world, uh, but he is going to be heading up the probably one of the more controversial offices, and he's going to be torn between what the public wants and then what his bosses want, and they're probably yeah, not the same it, thing. <laughs> AARO, since its very creation, has been there so the government can say it's doing something without actually doing anything. Yeah. It's a PR thing. That's it. This is a PR firm. Yep. Now, to go to another story, another story which is somewhat related, but uh, and I'm just curious by the authors of this story. Is it Dr. Seuss? It's not Dr. Seuss. Not as far as I know. But... Here's the headline here. I'm going to bring this up on, on screen here. Are we being visited by intelligent entities from a higher dimension? I love that headline. Now, this is uh, an article written by Popular Mechanics. Oh. This is the source of the article. It's Popular Mechanics, which I, I, I get the, that UFOs and aliens, they generate clicks and uh, people want to know more about this information, just more about these stories and the possibilities. Uh, but popular mechanics, they've notably been anti-alien, anti-UFO, anti-9-11 conspiracy, anti-everything. Like Wait, how'd you get from there to 9-11? Because a huge jump. They're, they're historically anti-conspiracy theory. And uh, that has been their bread and butter is like trying to debunk or debunking conspiracy theories, whether it's 9-11, uh, UFO sightings, chemtrails. They, they do that. Every now and again, they'll do some featured articles trying to debunk stuff. But now they're putting out an article 
uh, openly uh, questioning, are we being visited by aliens or higher entities from another dimension? Yep. Here it is. Our window on the world is limited by our human senses. So could something be lurking beyond our perception? Yep. <laughs> Sam agree? I, Sam's I, all Sam, on board. Yeah, I'm, on, I'm on board with <laughs> Sam on this one. Uh, well, and, and if you recall, we even talked about this on the last show and we had someone call in and ask about it. Yeah. Uh it is difficult to imagine the idea of higher dimensions, especially given that our own perception of reality is based mainly on what we can see, what we can see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. To consider what might lie beyond our physical reality, imagine a world that is entirely two-dimensional, a place inhabited by flat shapes like squares or and triangles that have Ooh. no physical depth. Can you imagine that world where you're yep. a square or a triangle, Cratchit? Only a square or triangle. Yeah. Yep. That's what you got. No rhombus, no trapezoid, or trapeze, uh, or, or, or what do we also got? Hexagons, maybe? What about a parallelogram? Parallelogram. That's one of my favorite lelograms. <laughs> one of my favorite lelograms. <laughs> um... How would these two-dimensional entities perceive a visitor from the third dimension? If we then shift things to our own three-dimensional reality, how would we perceive a visitor from a higher dimensional plane of existence than our own? Would we even be aware of them? Over the years, it has been speculated that higher dimensions could explain various phenomena ranging from paranormal activity to encounters with intelligent alien entities. It would certainly explain why such phenomena are so difficult to record or reproduce. Uh, the existence of higher dimensions isn't just science fiction, a uh, science fiction concept either. Such dimensions of are integral. They're an integral part of physics and mathematics and are in, and are even required for some theories such as string theory to work at all. I thought the string theory has been pretty much a dead end at this point. I know there's some people hanging on to string theory, but... Uh, I, I, Did you I, say they're hanging on by a thread? By a string, if you will, Cratchit. A very thin string. Uh, today, it is thought that the universe may have started out as many... Uh, started out with as many as 11 dimensions. The idea, what? then... That intelligent entities might, inha might inhabit some of these higher dimensions and are capable of even temporarily visiting and interacting with our own dimension is uh, certainly not without some merit. Actually detecting or even communicating with such beings, if they even exist at all, however, it represents a whole, uh, whole other set of challenges. And this is according to popular mechanics. I'm, I like are, that. I'm, I'm curious on the 11 dimensions. The 11 dimensions? Well, so, the, if the fourth dimension, I think, is generally assumed to be time, is that right? Time and space. The fourth uh, dimension. Are those two different ones? I think you can't have one without the other. I don't think. Mm -hmm. It's like but, uh, it's like Oreo. You can't have an Oreo without the center, like a creamy center. Oh, so you're saying that dimensions as they go up, their 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 gestalt is is greater than the sum of their parts. Yes. All right. I just want to know what's above. Even if okay, four is time and five is space. Yeah. What's six through eleven? So this has been so there are uh, uh, I would say you want to call them like remote viewers. You can call them uh, people who just uh, use the astral realm to 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 gaze upon these different uh, levels. Um, so hypothetically, like five or six, those I think are commonly referred to as like the afterlife dimensions. And like there are some afterlife dimensions that are better than others. Like I like I heard like the afterlife level five, it's okay, but you really want to get to level seven. That's where it is the heavenly one that we all think about, where it's bright, it's warm. You're you're interacting with loved ones. You feel uh, just a, a great sense of love. I've heard that the the seventh dimension. That's the one, people. That's the one you want to get to. Number five, uh, not so, not so cool. And then at the very tippity top is the one ruled by God. Now I can find a breakdown of these dimensions. Yeah, uh, I found an article on phys.org about it. Um, so it's phys physicists, physicists talking about it. 
Um, this gets real sloppy, though. See, they don't get into the speculation. They're just talking about dimensions mathematically. Uh, I would. I need to approach this from a remote viewing perspective. Like, what do these people see? Uh, what do they perceive as higher dimensions? What occupies those dimensions? And how do we get there? Is it just through the process of death and our soul travels up to a, a one dimension up, two dimensions up? Or can we go... Sh- can we skyrocket right to the top of the charts? Go to dimension eleven. Like uh, it's well, this list only goes through ten, so I'm not sure even what eleven is. This one even refers to it as the tenth and final dimension. Uh, well, then where'd they get eleven from? I don't know. There's some shenanigans going on. Or maybe it's a secret dimension. Maybe we're not supposed to know about it. Uh, well, <laughs> it, I mean, they shouldn't keep it secret. Don't keep that shit locked down. Now, there was a video. Let's see if I can find it real quick. It came out not too long ago. I uh, I listened to uh, Re- Regina Meredith sometimes. Uh, Regina Meredith has or had a show on the, the Gaia Network. And the, the Gaia Network, uh, I think, did her dirty. And so she started her own YouTube channel. And about, I would say maybe about uh, two months ago, she had on a person, I believe, talking about uh, the higher dimensions and what happens when you die. Let's see if I can, I'll see if I can just pick through like some of these higher dimensions. He doesn't like to talk about a lot of these higher dimensions, but I'll just plop, plop it down right, right here and see what he's talking about to it and this is these are templates you could say well games okay so certain realms are all different templates different experiences so this is where you get the earthly realm the four corners earthly realm is a template of experience within the construct realm two is what people will call the galactics galactic races being so this guy he's basically saying like each level or each dimension is a template and that if you take our level right here, which is basically like level three, and you go up to like level four or five, it, the template is fine. It's just, it's expanded upon and like we're all fractals. Like our dimension right here is just a fractal reduced down of a higher dimension. There's similarities, but the way you interact with those dimensions is different than what you do down here. And so there are representations of like, uh, the land or building or trees or stuff like that. It just it is constructed differently in these higher dimensions. And uh, just like just because you have a template doesn't mean it's a starting point. It doesn't mean you always come to the same ending once you start using that template. So let's see if I can go up a little higher here and talk when he talks about higher dimensions. I mean, that all of it from the very clock... From the very construct with the 12, the 13, the very thing with the 13 DNA strand within the brain, all of it is we're multidimensional beings. Uh, well, I'm, I'll, have to, I'll, have to, I'll, I'll see if I can clip it for the uh, this Saturday show. Um, but this guy, he does describe the different dimensions. Yeah, who was that who was talking about that? Uh, this is uh, Darius J. Wright. Darius J. Wright. He is, uh, let's see here. Uh, Dear Shay Wright, uh, he is an out-of-body experiencer. He has learned to navigate the realms and dimensions of Earth without fear and tells us that our thoughts never die. And so he, we can go to his... He's got a website and everything. I, I wish we knew... We, I, I, I wish I knew we were going to go into this. Or else like, I could have I clipped this. And uh, well, here's, a, here's a 2005 TED Talk by Brian Green. He's specifically talking about string theory. He says there's 26 dimensions. Fuck him. I want Darius, not the not the Brian Green. Bullshit. There's he's not gonna, he's not gonna tell me with it. He's he's gonna say, yeah, there are dimensions up there, but he's not gonna tell me what's in those dimensions. Do you want any of these links to dig through for Saturday? Yeah, sure. Pass them over to me. Bullshit. <laughs> oh. All right. Nah, I'm sorry, people. You drop down. By the way, I also put the uh, full archive version of the. Um, Popular Mechanics article that the other one was su- was summarizing, but I dropped the whole thing in Carrot Shop as well. Let's see. Maybe I'm going to drop it right here. I'm just going to try one more time here. This is minute 40. 
which Darius talking about. Access to outside of the construct again, multiple times, doing this over and over and over again because I pierce through the number one thing that is blocking every single soul here from truly accessing things is the fear. Absolutely. Okay. Stop fearing so stuff. let's continue on <laughs> and kind of do the next slices of the realms. And again, each realm is multidimensional and has experiences and array of experiences within that realm. So now we've moved past the sixth, there's sixth realm, which as you talked about some of the entities that would show up as um, 666. So now we've moved <laughs> past six and we're going to seven. When you go up to realm seven, this is where you're gaining a lot of what people call the angelics. Think of numbers. It's all symbolic to here as well. So seven is part of the angel number. It's, it's angelic realm. This is where you'll get the different races of angels. You have the seraphims, you have the angels, you have what people call fallen, it's not necessarily. I mean, some of them have come here. This is where you'll see a lot of the original a angels mm -hmm. have have projected their consciousness into physical bodies here to help assist yes a lot of that okay. going on right now a lot of the original bodies as well some of uh what people call the giant bodies the giant angels are in locations within antarctica and stasis some of them some of them are completely no longer physically intact some of them are some is it realm seven angelic realm and that i guess that would kind of fit to what popular mechanics was just talking about are we being visited by intelligent entities from a higher dimension and angels would definitely fit fit into that that model yeah realm seven well, and there's the, the talk that the angels and higher dimensional extraterrestrials are the same thing uh, I, I like that theory. Yeah, according to I mean, yeah, if you're just according to me, according to, and I would say a, a good number of people they would uh, agree with that. And yep. maybe that the reason that they hired the the mathematics guy at the AARO is that they want him to crunch the numbers. They wanted him to crunch the dimensional crunch numbers, the numbers and uh, stop looking at the sky. Start looking at the numbers. We want pen to pad right here. Start making some formulas, start doing some theorems, cross, multiply, and divide. We want answers. And let's see if we can get into those other dimensions and take their stuff. I think that's what CERN is trying to do. Or has done. Or maybe has already have done. There are people uh, saying that CERN has already basically created a demon portal. It exists below the CERN structure and it is open. It's coming through, the flooding through. They crack something open and they're trying to either keep it open or shut it down. But with all the goofiness going on over there, I say, yeah, they accidentally cracked open a portal. Why not? Isn't that the conceit of a bunch of Stephen King novels, too? There's that, that nether space between the man. I can't remember what it's called. Um, it's the basis of the... Uh, the Tommy Knockers? The well, the, well yeah, that and the, the Randall Flagg stories. And um, oh, there's a bunch of them where they... Uh, they uh, dang it! That whatever that liminal space is called. It's a. Uh, it's where is that where the dark tower lives? Yes. Yes. Okay. I have to forget. I'm not like a huge Stephen King guy, but uh, I, I I I keep hearing like most of my like teenage and adult life, people say, "Mike, you got to read the Dark Tower series. You're gonna love it. You got to read the book. It's only ninety two thousand pages. You got to read the book. Read about it." Please just Ron, read about this stuff. Ron Perlman reads it every week. Yeah, he loves it. It's his Bible. Uh, I got some more headlines for people out there. Some very important critical information. Here we go. Now, there is an update to the Trump assassination information, if you can believe it. Huh. The FBI has released some... some Additional information. I'll bring this up on screen. Not a lot, just a little bit, just enough to wet your whistle. And uh, we'll, we'll learn all about it right now. Come on, I, I press paste. I press paste. And Ken Wall. Yeah. 
There we go. And Ken, while we have you separately, I understand there is breaking news on the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. The FBI having an update on that investigation. What's the latest? Yeah, they FBI officials just back. brief reporters on their latest findings, and it was a bit unsatisfying in the sense that they still have not determined a motive, the reason that Thomas Crooks attempted this assassination. Uh, they say that they've seen sort of ideology going both ways when they look at his social media accounts and his writings. And they say that he Googled both uh, Democratic and Republican events. So what they've concluded in terms of his mindset is they want, he wanted to do something big. He wanted to attack a particular event, but it, it wasn't that the Donald Trump event was really a matter of opportunity. It wasn't that he was necessarily focused on Mr. Trump because he was also Googling things about President Biden and the DNC's events. They've also, though, definitively concluded that there was no relation between between him and any foreign entity, yeah, that right. he had no co-conspirators. Uh, and they also said, by the way, that that drone flight, that 11-minute drone flight that he conducted two hours before the event, that that certainly helped him assess the security posture. So that's they're not investigating the security failures, but that's an example of where the Secret Service had a massive security failures. In We're gonna call Thanks you for watching. Dog. Stay updated about There you go. Uh, he, wow, they just cut that one off quick. They did. They, uh, so... The FBI is saying this guy definitely worked alone. And his overseas, his uh, telegram messaging, his encrypted messengers, he wasn't talking to anybody related to the assassination. Trust us. Leave this alone. Still not a lot of hold, uh, not a lot of information. They tried to obfuscate like, oh, well, this guy wasn't necessarily uh politically motivated on one side or the other because he was Googling both parties, which he may have been. But we still didn't hear an explanation about the IEDs, the bombs, the remote detonator. Uh, and it's come to light that the the parents of the shooter have recently retained counsel from... Uh, so their lawyer specializes in, uh, I guess, uh, wrongful death lawsuits. And so the parents think that they might be sued or, or, or charges filed against them. For aiding and abetting, or uh, in some in some way, they may have had a heads up about what was going to happen, and they failed to do something. So, uh, I still think it's an FBI uh, work job gone wrong. Mm -hmm. That the, the FBI worked this guy up. Uh, there, he 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 was at a shooting range that was also occupied and was used by Department of Homeland Security. <laughs> so, I mean. It, there's too many things here. It's not adding up. Well, and, and we've talked about it before, and I, I still hold to the theory that the exact same scenario, not the same exact same scenario, the exact same situation occurred here that happened during the Boston bombing. Mm -hmm. The FBI or other unnamed agencies spun up those guys at the Boston bombing and explained how to build a, um, a pressure cooker bomb that wasn't going to work. Uh, one of the guys in the research of that determined, oh, I need to do it this way so it will work. Yeah. Um, it went off, killing a bunch of people, all that what stuff, man, blah, 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 blah. Um, but same sort of thing here in this particular scenario was this guy was supposed to have, um, you know, oh, we're going to go discover his, his, uh, explosives in the car, or maybe there'd be a, a, a slight, very small explosion of a failed explosive device or something like that. Uh, but then he took it upon himself to take it one step further involving the, the gun, which was never part of the, uh, the original plan. Mm -hmm. so. Boy, did I get bucked. Yeah, you got bucked. That one's not going to catch you. It's 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 catching on. It it, it is it's, it's scratching it's catching on pretty soon. <laughs> it's it's the new hit of the summer. Now, uh, the Surgeon General. You know about this guy, Cratchit, the Surgeon General of the United Wait, States. Wait, is he American? involved in the assassination? No, thing? not that I'm aware of. Oh, you didn't play the music. Oh, the transition music. Yeah, yeah I got a transition out here. What the fuck? Sorry. Hey, yo. Uh, the only the, Surgeon General I trust is C. Everett Coop. Well, the Surgeon General is, is, is has come out with some, I guess, some suggestions and advice for people. You know, these are uh, very stressful times. And the Surgeon General has, uh, has, has an announcement for some people. So uh, this is a, an opinion piece uh, from the New York Times. But it says, uh, Surgeon General, parents are at wit's end. We can do better. Oh, really? 
So I guess modern day parents, young parents are at wit's end. Uh, one day when my daughter was a year old, she stopped moving her right leg. Tests found that she had a deep infection in her thigh that was dangerously close to her bone. She was rushed off for surgery. Thankfully, she's now healthy, spirited, uh, spirited young girl. But the uh, excruciating days we spent in the hospital were some of the hardest of my life. My wife, Alice, and I spent uh, felt helpless and heartbroken. We got through it because of excellent medical care, understanding workplace, and loved ones who showed up and reminded us that we were not alone. Uh, a recent study by American uh, Psychological Association revealed that 48% of parents say most days... Their stress is completely overwhelming compared to 26% of other adults who reported the same. They are navigating traditional hardships of parenting, uh, worrying about money and safety, struggling to get enough sleep, as well as new stressors, including the omnipresent screens, a, uh, a youth, uh, youth mental health crisis, and widespread fear about the future. Uh, stress is tougher to manage when you feel like you're on your own, which is why it's particular, particularly concerning that so many parents, single parents, most of all, report feeling lonelier than other adults. So this is this has come out in the Surgeon General uh, is basically saying uh, young parents are under more stress than ever, and they're not rising to the challenge. At least 48 percent are saying they're just completely overwhelmed with society and their kids in it at this point are there any possible pharmaceuticals that could help well i'm sure i'm sure a good chunk of these kids are already probably on them i don't know for and a what fact about the parents too yeah but yeah okay they could yeah, drugs for the entire family mm -hmm. yeah i take your pick but yeah you could you could dose the entire family and everyone's uh happier i guess but you don't know but, uh, we don't, can, take, don't take your uppers your on a downer day or vice versa. You'll get all messed up. This is, what, this is what you got. Two two options. Drugs or sex. Drugs or sex. Take your pick, your pick, kid. Do I have to choose between those two? That's it. That's all you got. Damn it. I want both. Don't make me choose. But uh, this re is related to uh, another article that I came across. Uh, it, Wait, what's the follow up on that? They're just announcing there's a problem and everyone can just go well, and go to hell. Let's uh, let's look. So I I just found this opinion piece. So if you want to mind search uh, Surgeon General parent stress because the, the, the actual statement might be this is an opinion piece because they, this New York Times wanted to, to jump off on this uh, parent stress. I don't know what they're recommending. Uh, let's see. I found the official advisor. Ooh, this is like lots of colors and all sorts of stuff going on. It's like a nice PDF with graphics and shit. Okay, uh, well, what am I doing with all this? Let's see what they're saying. Oh, this is long. This is 36 pages in this PDF. The Surgeon General's adv advisory are public statement to draw attention to the public health issue that require Wait, awareness it. and action. Try this link and go to page... 29. Page 29. Okay. Here we go. Wow. It's a nice PDF. Uh, what parents and caregivers can do. Remember, caring for yourself is a key part of how you care for your family. Some activities that can help reduce stress include exercise, sleep, and balanced diet. All the time, mindfulness, meditation, <laughs> and recreational activities that bring joy. What if nothing brings you joy? What if you're yeah, totally sucks. joyless? You better ascend to a higher dimension. You're not going to have any joy. Yeah, that's true. It can be difficult to prioritize uh, yourself amid the demands of parenting, but even small investments of time in stress-reducing activities can make a meaningful difference. Uh, setting healthy boundaries to allow one to take time should not bring guilt or shame, but rather be seen as a vital, vital actions that can ultimately benefit parents and caregivers as well as their children. Finally, it's impossible to get parenting right all the time. So uh, being compassionate and forgiving with oneself is essential. So yeah, you're gonna, sometimes you're going to drop the kid. Sometimes the kid's going to fall down the stairs. It's important it's fine. to forgive They're made yourself. At that age. You have to forgive yourself. You don't strap your kid in, into the car seat. It flies through the windshield. Forgive yourself first. Just go make another one. Yep. So basically, they're telling you, um, uh, essentially, 
uh, don't worry, be happy. <laughs> That's what they're telling you. That's what they're telling you. The, the, the last point here, uh, recognize how mental health challenges manifest and seek help when needed. And they talk about getting help from a medical professional because they got the drugs. Yes. It's not said here. I was looking for them to actually recommend pharmaceuticals directly, but the closest we get is go see a medical professional. Yeah, you can do that. Go see a medical professional. You can uh, self-medicate. I need some marijuana. Yeah, that could that could help. I've got to have some marijuana. That helps out with the parents. Why? What are your symptoms? And there's so so many to even name. You know. I was always healthy, and then I I came down with this flu. I can't get rid of it. I've been sick for five months now. I, I had the real pot. The real pot. I had it, but after three days of fighting with my husband and no sleep and taking abuse from my next door neighbor, my husband took it away from me just twenty minutes ago. Sounds very stressful. Mm. Some marijuana should would calm you right down. But don't give don't give Maude any children to take care of. Yeah, maybe. But there is a a, a different study that uh, that came out, or I guess a different uh, theory uh, be, uh, that is being proposed here when it comes to stress and what's going on with the mental health cri- crisis in today's society. So eminent scientist Richard Dawkins reveals fascinating theory behind the West's mental health crisis. Uh, maybe I am crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Rising cases of mental illness in developed countries might be attributed uh, attributed to their astonishing rate of technological change, according to biologist Richard Dawkins, the iconic British author and evolutionary scientist, who's 83, by the way, floated the theory that we're ev- evolving too slowly to keep up with our environments, creating an imbalance that disrupts our senses, uh, our sense of well-being. He floated the theory on a podcast appearance on Sunday, echoing years of research that have been linked to social media use, uh, that have linked social media use to depression among young people, among other modern ailments. Quote, many people do worry that the pace of change is such that we are no longer well adapted to live in it, Dawkins told the podcast listeners. Uh, This is a worry, he said. Despite these seemingly common sense concerns, however, debate rages on over the relationship between technological advancements and the human's well-being. With one study led by Oxford's Inter- Internet Institute finding no smoking gun linking the two. So there. Well, what you go. about what about transhumanism? Aren't we driving towards that? I think that's what we're trying to get to. Right, we're trying to become cyborgs. I thought that's what we're trying to do. I don't know. And he's but saying he's saying we're doing it too fast. Cyborg creation. He says we're yeah we're we're going too fast, doing too much. We're going too fast, and that is creating an imbalance in our society, leading to stress, anxiety, depression. Um, yeah. Uh, well, see, there, there's, there's definitely. I'll just state it this way: there's definitely a lot of generally accepted mental illness. It's, it's, here's like the last little bit here. The internet is a huge change. It's, gig, it's a gigantic change. He noted, "We become adapted. To, we beca- we became adapted to it. Uh, astonishingly, we uh, became adapted to it with astonishing uh, r- rapidity. If we lost electricity, if we suddenly lost technology we're used to, Dawkins worry, humanity might not be able to even." begin to adapt in time without great social upheaval and death. It's probably a dangerous problem, Dawkins told the podcast, and one that needs to be sorted. Man-made extinction, he said, it's just as bad as the other. I think it's tragic. Okay. Well, he's 83. He's old. What does he know? Well, we're having, he can just say whatever he wants at this ha- point. We're having a good time on Twitter, aren't we, people? It's, it's amazing out there. Okay. Okay. Uh, a lot of crisis, a lot of uh, worried people out there, worried sick. Do you know any uh, young parents? I know I a know, few. What, what, yeah, I get. I, yeah, I do. I know yes. a few young parents. I know. Right? I know some in their early twenties, younger than twenty-five, with kids. Yes, I know a few young parents, and they do seem to be insanely stressed out. Like they just mm-hmm. have like way more worries than I think my parents had. 
Like my parents, they worried that you know I was doing drugs, smoking pot, and <laughs> you know into into too much punk rock, hanging out with and, like the and rock. You kids. proved them that that was never anything that you were involved in. Well, I. So you're saying I were was? Right. I was a. I had the real pot. Uh, <laughs> I I had it for a bit, and then they took it away from me. Just twenty minutes ago. <laughs> twenty minutes ago. I needed that. I need some marijuana. I was I was smoking doobies every ding dong day in high school, but uh, I grew past. It. I got out of it. Um, now I I just don't smoke pot because it just doesn't sit well with me. But that's a minor concern to whatever whatever's going on today with not just drugs. It's like uh, there is the the trans ideology that mm -hmm. don't know how to navigate that as a parent. You don't want to be rude. You want to be accepting. But at the same time, is your is your kid being brainwashed? And you don't want... It's, it's like a delicate balance of to, to not wanting to, not wanting to offend an ideology in a group of people versus is my kid really feeling this way or are they being talked into it in some way? Yeah. Uh, then you have to put drugs on top of that. Then you put... Uh, Violence, crime, everything. It just seems like it's... And then social media. It's and all, you're forgetting the worst part. What's that? Marijuana? All these new damn Star Wars movies. There is. There's just so many damn Star Wars movies. I'm so uh, tired of all these Star Wars. That's not necessarily a catalyst. That is a symptom of the problem. <laughs> I think it's both. Yeah. And climate change. Yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of climate change, let's talk about some weird radar stuff. I'm glad you're here. There, I, I there's this weird. Well, I'm glad you're here too, Mike, because otherwise the show would be much more boring. Well, you know, uh, it takes me reading news two to tango. But up on screen here, this was uh, posted a few days ago, August 24th, and it shows for people listening at home. This weird radar signature. This comes, so this is uh, in Mexico right now. It looks like a giant UFO or pinwheel, but it's not. Good morning to you, too. And this is what the, the, the tweet says. And um, it looks like, yeah, it does look like a giant UFO in Central America, just so, like smack dab in the middle of Mexico. Is this uh, a product of malfunctioning radar sensor equipment or is there legitimately something that the radar signatures are bouncing off of to produce this very large thing's huge look at the size of that thing. it's a huge thing it is a giant thing cratchit thank you for bringing that up it's like uh, i would say it's half the width of central yeah, like america 300 miles across yeah ridiculous it's insane now, well, I, how are you going to park that UFO? I, it's not practical. It's just, it, if it is a UFO. Look at the size of that thing. Now, um, it's like it say, someone in the, uh, the, the the person who posted it said this is a reoccurring phenomenon. It, it, it's a frequency technology that can affect weather, like a harp-like technology. Not necessarily harp, but something like harp. And... Um, there's like an update to it. I'm just wondering if anybody else has seen this, like when it comes to radar. Given its location, uh, Necroma Necromechanimal says it's the world's largest sombrero. It certainly does look like that. It's huge. Okay. Wow, that's pretty big. Uh, here is... Uh, Biggest mic I've ever seen. This is uh, another one right here. A uh, significant storm is taking place just under the southern tip of Baja, Mexico. And and so here's a different view of it. I screenshotted it just now. And so there it is. It's so it's bizarre. And I'm not seeing too many good explanations like scientific. Oh, it's, it's this. We're using this kind of Doppler radar. It commonly has this kind of uh, radar anomaly and we are addressing it. We are configuring our sensors. We're doing maximum sensor sweeps to configure this kind of thing. So, yeah. Sensors at maximum sensitivity. Yeah. Sensors at maximum. <laughs> yeah. Sensors at maximum there, sensitivity. So the, the, the sensors at maximum sensitivity here, that's why it's this anomaly. But I'm not seeing any, I'm not seeing any good explanation here. 
You have any guesses, Cratchit, on this radar anomaly? Well, I mean, clearly it's it's equipment malfunctioning as far as you know, how, how stuff's getting mapped. What, whatever API they're using to map radar location, because given the size of that, it's going to be um, uh, the, the general sweep the sweep range of that particular radar unit. Um, and it's just it's throwing out a, a bad signal, which is how it's getting mapped that way. But I do like the giant sombrero UFO. Yeah, uh, that's the only one that really makes any sense right now. As as stupid as that sounds, that's the that's all we got. Aliens. Uh, but someone proposed this problem to uh, Grok, the AI that lives on Twitter, and this is what it passed back. So speculation galore from the depths of X X theories range from the plausible to. I've had too much space coffee. Some folks are whispering about UFOs doing some intergalactic teleportation. Others are talking about weather manipulation. And a few are even suggesting it's a sign from ancient gods or a giant magnet from a cartoon movie. This is the AI saying this. The scientific guess, though, now if we're uh, if we're playing it by the book, uh, weather radar can get a bit quirky. They might pick up on non-weather phenomenon like temp- temperature inversion, radio interference, and even s- the sun deciding to photobomb the radar. But for the spe- for this specific case, the most grounded explanation points towards a radar glitch or an artifact in the software. Yeah, that's what I said. You said a radar glitch? No, I said software problems, problems with the API. It's not, sure, it's it's not reporting correctly to the mapping. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's the, I guess, the the most reasonable one. Uh, because if it was a UFO, it would be literally the size, double the size of the Independence Day uh, hmm. uh, Those were UFOs. much smaller. They were, yeah. Those were like 10 miles across, something like that, weren't they? Though the big guy up in space, that was huge. The uh, mothership? That, that was a quarter the size of the moon. Yeah, it was huge. No, all I'm saying is they got people who handle these things, David. Yeah. <laughs> How you handle a, a, something that size? That's huge. No, the, the one there would be about 300, 350 miles across. Yeah. Um, Let's so the bastards. It's, it's, it's a big boy. That's your it's, big it's, boy. A, it's a big boy, yeah. Oh, I better call my mother. But I just wanted to bring this up. It's a, it's a little uh, curious, and uh, people are talking about it. Um, but you're saying radar, radar glitch. A software application problem. Computer's broke. Yes. <laughs> Computer, computers broke. Okay. I want to start using that at work anytime <laughs> someone complains about some. Computer's broke. Computer's broke. <laughs> Send email. <laughs> Maybe we got one more headline for people. Uh, let's see here. Um, hmm. No, I think I'm going to pass it over to Crutchet and see what he has. Are we going to sneak in a call or two? Yeah, why not? You want to... Want to sneak in some calls? Yeah, I want. I want to hear from people. What else could this be in Mexico? Six one four three eight eight nine one zero oh, nine. We'll take some calls right now. Or you can Skype people, directly we, in. We never, ever, ever take calls. Away. No, we have time because uh, Joe does not have his segment today, and uh, so yeah, let's listen to some some what uh, people have to say. Um. Like, like, for instance, uh, this. This all began when I fucked General James Clapper, mm-hmm. my old boss, at the office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence, mm-hmm. OUSDI, was asked by President Barack Obama to become the new thug boy. Clapper and Woods didn't always <laughs> suck, suck. But when Clapper made the move to become Jeez. the thug boy, he offered Woods the job at DIA regardless. It's just a How did you get Decker. suck, suck out of there? Uh, he did say suck, suck in the book. In in relation to like a chupacabra kind of thing, <laughs> wouldn't that be chupa chupa? Yeah, yeah, he did. He just said uh, someone called in. And they hung up right away. I, I press answer, so call in again. Call in again. And like, hey, like the yo. conversation. Yeah, we'll we'll talk for five minutes. Sure, whatever. Uh, he was wearing what many have described as a gimp mask and gloves. We've had, we've read those we've read those stories. We've read those stories. I have so many like weird stories I haven't gotten to on the podcast, uh, like uh, an, an article saying the advantages of being struck by lightning. 
Um, beauty clinic. Oh, you get a cool haircut. A uh, beauty clinic allegedly tricks young man into getting breast implants. I, saw, I did hear, see that. Uh, the world's most dangerous roller coaster uh, reaches 300 miles an hour before killing all riders. Uh, Sweden. Did it really kill everybody? Well, I mean, it, it's probably it's still. I the, shared that story of when I was a kid, I almost fell off a freaking amusement park ride. I would. Then they. Then someone else did. I, I I used to build those coasters in a roller coaster tycoon and. Uh, <laughs> No one came to my park. Uh, after that first ride. Woman claims she hasn't slept in over 30 years. I have that headline. Mom divides internet over whether to tip at Chuck E. Cheese. So it's a very controversial story. I, think I had that one a couple of months ago. Um, let's see. Taco Bell uh, to roll out AI drive through ordering in hundreds of locations by year's end, which is extraordinary. So it's a lot of uh, goofy ones. Then T-boy, teen boy goes on a hunger strike until mother buys him an iPhone, which I don't know if that works, but I, I, I applaud the effort. What if she Wrong. bought him dinner instead? Mm, it'd be uh, kind of ironic. Caller, you're on the air. Hey, what's up, Mike? Hey, hey who, Mike. Who, who, who are we talking First to? First time caller here. This is Phil and Lindsay from Connecticut. Phil Huge and fan. Lindsay. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Doing great, Mike. How you doing? We're doing well. Awesome. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about aliens. Love to hear it. I know you're a huge fan. I know I was a huge fan for a long time, too. But uh, unfortunately, I, I've been uh, leaning towards the uh, spiritual side of things lately. So I, I, I don't know, man. I don't think aliens are what people are saying they are, you know, as far as, you know, the little gray men. In the physical form, I'm not entirely sure on that. I'm not sold. I, I I would say I'm leaning towards that as well. Like uh, it's not they're not from a star system seventy light years away. Uh, at least not right, all of right. them. There there's there's something else. I don't know. Deeper I'm going on here. Leaning towards. I'm also leaning towards uh, space is kind of you know fake and gay, but okay. I don't know. I don't know. So it's, that, it's that, okay. You can say you're flat earther. At the moment. Flat yeah, 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 yeah. Essentially, essentially. Yes, we're flat earthers. Do you guys? Uh, do you guys follow the YouTuber uh, Old World Florida? I uh, I've watched a few of his videos before. He's yeah, he's got some good stuff. Yeah. I don't. Um, I don't know. I don't know if he's a flat earther, but he's got uh, a good take on some stuff and. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I think he relies on AI a little too much, but I think when it comes to some of his ideas, yeah. um, overall, he's got some good ideas. He just needs to condense down his three-hour podcast into 45 minutes of solid information. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's yeah, I agree with you there. Um, I don't know, man, just huge fan. First time calling, I'm a little nervous. That's all right. So are, you, <laughs> are, are both you guys on the same page when it comes to your view on the world? Uh, yes, as of recently, yeah. Past four years. Yeah, we, we uh, yeah. Well, yeah. who, who, uh, who took the lead? Like, did, was it Lindsay that presented you with the information or vice versa? Uh, vice versa. I was, I was a big, you know, George Bush 9-11 guy in high school. I'm, I'm fairly young, so I was, I wasn't, you know, too familiar with the event. I very faintly remember it so but at the same time you know it was, you know, it was, it was pretty obvious that really brought us to the edge of everything right yeah covid was the really the the breaking point for us yeah as far as all that goes i think it was a i was a full liberal before and I yeah all I, completely yeah changed that. yeah we were we were one of the few last couples that i'm aware of that was able to get along not seeing eye to eye on politics Wow, uh, I was a big Trump guy. She, she was not a Trump fan at all, yeah. and we just not, you know, didn't, you know, see that as an issue at the time. But eventually, she s s saw the light. But well, Lindsay, how did you know. how did you come around? What what was that process like? Uh, well, I was pregnant during 2020, so I dealt with a lot of uh, the stuff going on with like the medical system and not trusting everything that was going on. So I just started kind of like listening to film more and I don't know, digging deeper, listening to podcasts. You guys. You guys. Um, 
honestly, I started listening to Daily Wire at first, but they got kind of greasy. So I just kind of laid into the conspiracy podcast and, I don't know, everything just started to make sense. I mean, li- yeah, listening to conspiracy podcasts at that time, it probably was a little bit, I guess, helpful because you felt like you weren't alone. But also, probably it feel- maybe filled you with a little bit more stress and anxiety about the world. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, you know, I, I'm working. I'm an electrician, so that's. I'm seeing. I talk to a lot of people. I see how a lot of people are living, and you know, up here in Connecticut, people are pretty liberal, so. You know, they're, you got all the Kamala Walls signs everywhere, but, you know, you, you just try to, you know, skate on through, not yeah. say too much, you know, just nod your head, smile. <laughs> yeah, well, but, I'm, I'm kind of yeah. with you on your, on the skepticism of the, the UFO phenomenon. There's something going on. There's something that is interacting yeah, with for humanity. Sure. For sure, man. But we don't know. Demons, to, brother. It, it, demons. it very well could be demons, and that's why I was not happy when Lou Elizondo dismissed that out of hand. Uh, you, yeah, no, when I, you don't know, you don't dismiss any theory. You investigate, and he dismissed it out of hand. So he has right. an agenda. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean they all do. It's all either a money grab or you know, look at me, all that attention stuff. So. Well, it just yeah, uh, something I, I did not talk about it. on the show is that Lou Elizondo and Travis Taylor of Skinwalker Ranch, they have a company, they formed a company, and they recently moved. It was I think it was originally incorporated in Nevada, and they recently moved the business to Virginia. And I suspect that they are creating some sort of UF, UAP, UFO consulting form, for the government. Uh, like they're, they're basically creating their own version of Ghostbusters. That's what I think that they're doing. <laughs> you think? I'm, I, I think that's it. That's what they're doing. No, I believe it. I believe it. You know? Wow. Well, hey, thank Ooh. you guys for calling in. I really appreciate yeah. it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you guys are on the same page and not uh, at each other's throats anymore. That's nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Thank you for everything. Take Thanks care, guys. For all the work. I appreciate it. Yeah, blow us up. You got it. Yeah. Yeah, Travis Taylor and uh, Lou Elizondo have a... I believe they have a company together. There's one other person in there. Um, and I, I think they they moved their business to Virginia. Probably because they're that's where most of government is. And why wouldn't they uh, if they're that if they're that location? Why wouldn't they incorporate in Delaware? It's cheaper. I don't know. They need a they need a good business manager. They're going to pay too many taxes. Caller, you're on the air. Hello. Hello, my friend. Whoa, it's Blowtorch! Holy moly! Call now. I missed y'all. I don't know how long it's been. It's been uh, the reason I haven't been able to call in is because I've been uh, got a new job doing landscaping. Good for you, Same man. Yard. But I just quit that job, got a new job. I'm trying to go on a boat. You're going to be on a boat? On what a are boat. you doing on a boat, man? I'm going to be on a boat, shipping and receiving. you doing both? You're shipping and receiving? Import or export? Shipping and receiving. Nice. So, uh, we're, I, and importing. Are you on the, are you on the Gulf Coast? <laughs> yeah. I'm in, yes, the Gulf Coast. Nice. Free, free port, Texas. Dude, you're going to see some UFOs. If you're working out at at night there, you're going to see some UFOs. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, night shift makes the most money. And, uh, no, I've been blessed, you know, too blessed to be stressed. That's Good the way. Lord Jesus Christ. Are you still? But, uh, my father-in-law, he's a boatman, and uh, he, he even said, he, he's not a conspiracy guy, but he said they are shipping and receiving military cargo. Military cargo. Yeah, so... Uh, a tank they're, they're, uh, Chinese, the Chinese are also smuggling weapons into the country uh, via the West Coast. So I wonder where that military cargo is. Like, is it like our is military cargo or is it is somebody else's? Because the Chinese are smuggling weapons into the country on the West Coast. Does your, does your uncle say well, the, or, the origin of the equipment? Oh, China. China. Okay. Yep. Well, that's nice. Is that legal? <laughs> I, uh, I, don't, I don't think it's legal. 
<laughs> China. They can do anything. Yeah. But no one's stopping them. Um, so much is happening. My little boy, Josh uh, Jr., Blowtorch Jr., is uh, almost seven months old. Oh, congratulations. Yay! Congratulations on that. strong. And yes, my wife wants to move to Ohio. Yeah. Well, Ohio's yes. not bad. Uh, it's it's uh, so you're on the Gulf Coast. You're probably used to the humidity at this point. So Ohio can get very humid during this time of year. Um, it's cheaper, probably a little bit than Texas. It just really depends on where you where you live in Ohio. There are, there are more expensive parts, and but I mean. It, it, it's okay. I grew up here. It might be a little bit of a, a shock for you guys, but uh, it's not bad. It's not great. It's not bad. Yeah, at the end of the day, it probably won't ever happen because family and the only reason I wanted to move was because of uh, the marijuana laws, but Texas just changed the law. Now you can have your medical marijuana license. Yeah, Ohio, somehow we got marijuana. You can grow here. You can have personal use. Um, there are or there are uh, dispensaries now. It uh, it's it's all happening here in Ohio. If you like marijuana, it it doesn't do much for me, but uh, for people that uh, that want to use it, it's not a bad state. And it's a good quality. I don't know. Um, I don't trust. So I I don't trust like big pharma and like big ag. Good. Like so, uh, I I just read an article that. A part of like when you when you buy marijuana from these big dispensaries, they're using spray chemicals, and so it's a crop, just like uh, any other kind of crop, mass-produced crop. They have to uh, use herbicides and pesticides, and so that's doused in in the marijuana, and then you're smoking that. And some people are getting sick, and the cheapest versions of these chemicals for herbicides and pesticides come from China, and so. The, the quality of the marijuana, I, I'm skeptical of what you get at dispensaries. Yeah. yeah. So find you a good homegrown, home grower. Uh, yeah. You got you to gotta find somebody who knows how to, uh, to grow. Grow it organic and just grow it uh, off the land. Yeah. I mean, that's the best. I mean, but that's, that goes with anything, whether it's food or, or marijuana, no matter what. The stuff you grow yourself is always going to be the best. Amen to that. Yeah. Amen to that. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm going to make it short and sweet. We all know everything is fake. Mm -hmm. uh, the word of the stage. Wake up. Well, Blowtorch, thank you for that. It's great to hear from you. And good luck, good luck out there shipping and receiving. Make sure you wear a life vest, buddy. Yes, and a hard hat. Yeah, in our dad. You got it, man. We'll take we care. love you and hope to one day become your neighbor. Yeah, absolutely. Look forward to it. Yeah. Mar uh, marijuana is here in Ohio. You know? Yeah, it's it's legal, but what's the quality? I don't know. I'm skeptical of the quality. You don't smoke, Gretchen, do you? You don't have the real pot. Uh, I do not. No, you know, you, no one's got the real pot. No. I am at a point now where I am so exhausted that sometimes I cannot speak. Literally, cannot speak. Yeah, because of the marijuana. I need some marijuana. Uh, all right, Chris, let's see what you got over there. Attica! Attica! I don't have anything about Attica. Got anything about Freedom Rock? Hey man, is that Freedom Rock? Yeah man, turn it, we'll turn it up, man. Trying to see if I got anything about Ohio. Got any, any, any Ohio news? I thought I had an Ohio story. Uh, got a a, a a Freedom Rock Hampshire song story. about Ohio, maybe? An Oakland story. Hmm. Well, look, we'll go with this one while I'm digging around for my okay. Ohio story. I swear yeah. I had an Ohio story. All right. I'm all riled up. But now I can't find it. Um, 
This one just, it, it caught my eye. It mm. piqued my interest. Okay. Based on the first sentence of this piece of shit article. Well, we'll bring it up on screen here. We'll figure this out. Are the stickers on fruit actually edible? Man, I got mixed emotions about this one. I wouldn't think that this requires an article, but read the first sentence. I always peel off the stickers, but this is me. I'm just a, uh, you know, a silly oh, yeah. billy. Uh, it happens to the best of us. You're enjoying a ripe summer peach or crunchy apple when you suddenly realize you inadvertently eaten the sticker. Holy. So I want to, yeah, I want to stop right there. <laughs> what the fuck? This person should not be near sharp objects, motor vehicles, or apples. children. Any sort of fruit, apparently. Yeah. Don't you always inspect the food before you eat it? Like, I always Don't you do. wash your fruit? Yeah. Like, you inspect it. You wash it uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, there's no bugs or any anything you don't want on there. But, no, this person is so hungry, they are eating through stickers and plastic wrap and everything. Yeah. And to your to the your comment you made on, a call, on the call with Blowtorch there, that a lot of produce is sprayed with heavily... Or heavy chemicals for um, uh, anti-pesticides and things yeah. like that. Are anti-pesticides? I guess they're just pesticides. Pesticides. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. If you're eating, if you, oh, it's happened to the best way. Just ate the sticker. Like, that means you didn't wash any of your produce? No. What the hell? No. But the, this person's the, a voter, by the way. Probably. I did find the Ohio story, too. So, uh, so you're enjoying a ripe summer peach or crunchy apple when you suddenly realize you inadvertently eaten the sticker. Your life briefly flashes before your eyes. It feels like the first time you swallowed chewing gum or a cherry pit after a Who short. Who does that too? <laughs> what is is this person just chomping and swallowing as fast as they can? What is happening? After a short moment of all-consuming panic, panic, you probably forgot all about it until next time. You do it twice. You do it every day. You just keep doing it. Yeah, every <laughs> every morning I eat a sticker. <laughs> I have to do it. Uh, luckily for all of us, the sticker on fruits and vegetables are generally safe to eat and are, are, and are unlikely to cause harm if swallowed uh, because they are directly well stuck to edible food, fruits and vegetables. The FDA mandates that uh, produce stickers be made from GRAS, generally recognized as safe materials. However, that doesn't mean you should throw caution to the wind and go around intentionally eating them. Yeah, I'm going to give these out for Halloween. Except unless you're this person, apparently. I'm not giving out candy. I'm giving out these stickers to eat. That's right. I save all the stickers, <laughs> and oh. on Halloween, everyone gets a sticker. I'm telling kids, these are generally recognized as safe to eat. So, <laughs> have at I'm it, not kids. sure if they're safe, but I can't be not safe. I eat one every morning. <laughs> the stickers can be a choking hazard for kids, are tasteless, well, that's the problem. We gotta we gotta taste these things up, like scratch and snip. Put like make them cherry flavor oh, or something a good like idea. that. Good yeah. idea. Should they be flavored like the thing they're on, or should it be different? I think you gotta you gotta mix and match. I want a cherry flavored sticker on my apple or grape flavored. Oh, you know, what if you made a little a little advertisement on there, like, hey, you're enjoying this apple. Wouldn't you enjoy some cherries more? Yeah, try it. And then you lick it, you get a, like a little cherry flavor on the sticker, <laughs> and then you eat your apple. Then you're like, oh god, you know what? This is a great combo. That cherry sticker was much better than this apple. Uh, still, if you're in a if you're in a rush and actually swallow a sticker with a big bite of your favorite variety, what variety of pear, you can rest assured that you'll be perfectly fine. Don't worry about it, people. Yeah, right. I don't I don't trust this person to operate heavy machinery or be near any sort of elderly. They people. go on a, quite a ways in this article about produce stickers. And like what what it means. I mean, I can keep going, but no, uh, I, think I, I think we should uh, move on. I just wanted to read that first article or the first sentence. Yeah, so. it's pretty crazy what's going on there. All right, I got an Ohio story. Bounce me out. Here. I'm tired of your gas. Now jerk that pistol and go to work. All right, you're gonna love this one. This involves two of your favorite things. Oh, Netflix. And cryptids. Wow. Oh, and three. And, and Ohio. 
Netflix will not air a documentary of missing Ohio man that was allegedly sacrificed by vampire coven. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Why not? <laughs> Why can't I watch this? This is right up my alley. Cool. Yeah, sounds great. An Ohio family is once again facing disappointment after learning the streaming giant Netflix was most likely shelving a documentary that would shed light on to the disappearance of a Dayton man nearly 30 years ago. According to the Times reporter, the documentary Vampires in Gem City was set to expose Dayton as having the second largest vampire coven in the United States and featured the missing persons case of 26-year-old George Philip Gall. Well, I, I talked about vampires not too long ago. If you remember that there was this, uh, in the 1970s, there was this doctor that was pretty convinced that there were vampires out there. I didn't know Dayton, which is basically a, a hour, two hours away from me, was had the second largest vampire code yeah, in, in the world. Why are there so many vampires in Dayton? You know why? Right, Patterson? Right, Pat? What, they all work there? Uh, and he, look, they, they they took the Roswell bodies there. Uh, what do these aliens want from us? They want our blood. Oh, so you're saying one of them was actually a vampire, got loose, bit one person, and now there's vampires all over town. Probably. Something like that. Yeah. Mm. It's reported that uh, Gall went missing October 13th, 1994, after getting off a bus near, uh, near the goth-themed asylum nightclub. The Urban bus driver there. told investigators that Gall walked towards the asylum nightclub and was never seen again. He was declared dead by the state of Ohio in 2002. My God. According to the Times reporter, it wasn't until 2008 that rumors of vampires started after a retired Dayton police officer told the Dayton Daily News that the bartender at the nightclub told him Gall was killed and beheaded for an occult ritual. That's quite a confession to make. It's quite a just yeah, just a nugget to drop there. By the way, hey, by you know the way, guy? yeah. <laughs> hey, remember that dude? Here's what it off. Here's what really happened. <laughs> I got photos. Um, it is it is reported that after Gaul's disappearance in nineteen ninety four. Okay. Um, oh, so um, it was reported that after Gaul's disappearance in nineteen ninety four, Williams went to the nightclub went to the nightclub undercover and noticed it attracted a large gothic vampire like crowd. Which, you know, by the way, makes sense because at that point in time, Anne Rice's novel, The Interview with a Vampire, and that whole series of novels was huge. And uh, there was a, a very large upsurge in gothic vampire, especially like in, like, it's like quasi goth, quasi industrial scene, like the music scene. And I would often see people wearing vampire like uh incisors like implants at shows hmm. it was a, it was pretty big at least here in ohio i don't know if anywhere else but here in when ohio did that was. uh when did that uh the um uh the dracula movie come out wasn't it around the same time interview with the vampire i believe came out no no not that oh, one. Oh, one oh, that dracula the, uh, bram stoker's yeah. um yeah. i think that was in 93 94 with uh keanu reeves Dracula. So there was like a there was a lot of like uh, 1992 yeah early early 90s vampire stuff goth stuff so I could see this um Williams also said uh, let's see so yeah undercover that the bartender confided that William Williams that Gauls was uh head oh my god okay so let me read this so it was reported that after Gaul's disappearance in 1994, Williams went to the nightclub undercover and noticed it attracted a large gothic vampire-like crowd. It is while he was undercover that the bartender confided in Williams that Gaul's head was sold inside the club. Williams How told much? it. I, we don't. We don't know. We don't have mm. a, really a number. I tell you what. I'll give you fourteen thousand dollars. <laughs> it's too much. Uh, Williams told the daily, uh, the Dayton Daily News that the bartender gave enough intricate details to make the story believable. Williams also said that Gull's body was placed in a storm sewer tunnel accessible inside the nightclub. Officers searched for the body but did not find any evidence of a crime, but they did find occult markings. According to the Times reporter, the mystery behind Gull's disappearance had led to the, had led to the birth of 
of the urban legend, with many Dayton residents claiming to have seen a headless man approaching them in tunnels to ask where his head was. Wow. That's a bummer. Uh, uh, Fillane told Times Report uh, told Times reporter that producers flew him and his family to Los Angeles three years ago to interview him about whether he believed the urgent le- legend is myth. Uh, Fillane told the news outlet that he does not believe in the urban legend. He believes that Gall is with his now deceased mother who searched for answers about his son's disappearance until her death in 2016. Uh, what's on Netflix announced a documentary directed by Joshua Rafe in 2024, but George's wife, Helen, Helen Gale and maternal uncle, Philip Flane told the times reporter that producers emailed to tell them that Netflix has decided not to air the show. Interesting. Uh, Flan told the news outlet the documentary changed gears from Gull's disappearance uh, to focus on a community of vampires with director David Holthouse uh, replacing the original director. The producer of the documentary, M. Elizabeth Hughes, emails Flan on August 2nd to confirm that Netflix was not going to air the documentary. According to the Times reporter, the family has given up hope on finding Gull's last remains, but still want to bring attention to the case. Flane says there uh, says that any light that shines on the case will be positive. I wonder why they shelved it. They already produced it. They already made it. Um, they said they were trying to investigate originally the disappearance, but then switch gears on the vampire community. Uh, Dayton's a weird place. And I, full of vampires, full of vampires, but also, like I said, it's pretty close to Wright Pat. And there's some other weird stuff that goes on in Dayton. Um, I'm trying to like, I'll, I'll do some research like on it. What? I, I, off the top of my head, I can't say, but I, I like, I just want to say I had, I have inklings that there's more going on in Dayton than just being a rundown Ohio city. And, uh, like maybe, I think maybe they discovered more than what they thought they would. And it became much more than just a a community of vampires. Maybe they rubbed up against something that was truly sadistic. And they're like, oh shit, uh, we got to shelve this because we're going to expose some people and those people have connections to people in power. Oh, you're saying, uh, um, the rich and rich and famous are yeah. down there acting as vampires, cutting people's possibly, heads off. Mm-hmm. or people connected to the base in some way. I'm just making stuff up right now. I don't know, but uh, to to spend that much time, it's it's not unheard of for Netflix just to shelve something. Uh, but this is fairly is a documentary. These are always fairly like they do well on Netflix when it comes to viewership, and it is true crime, which always does very well on Netflix or any streaming service at this point. Um, it sounds like a win-win because it also has vampires, which people yeah. love. But well, and especially if they've already got it pretty much done, kind of surprised they don't just fart that one out there and let it go. But and it sounds like a win-win for them. So for them, like that's why I'm thinking for them to not release it, they they must have encountered something that made it uh, politically difficult for them to to air, and they decided to shelve it. And it must have happened relatively recently. So the 2nd of August, just a few weeks ago. Um, they pr- Probably because they had to have anybody that they talked to who was a vampire, like, uh, or, you know, whatever in that scene. They probably had to sign waivers. They had to agree to be on the show and eventually got word back to maybe the family that we don't want you to be in this documentary associated with this. Well, word got back to the head vampire. Yeah, the big, the, 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 the high muckety muck. And it's like, listen, we're trying to keep this on the DL, okay? <laughs> we don't need, need people down in these tunnels with with wooden stakes. Yeah, we don't need we don't need vampire hunters down here. <laughs> we're just trying to party and maybe behead someone occasionally every decade. So in the early uh, announcements for this documentary. Um, It was described thusly, for the last 30 years, Dayton, Ohio has been home to the largest coven of vampires outside of New Orleans. 
Uh, when a man goes missing in the goth nightclub they use as their headquarters, the case goes cold until a police officer comes forward in 2008 with a story. It was a pig man. It was a pig man. No, it was a vampire. And then, oddly enough, on this website, there's a uh, picture of um, Bob Ross for some reason. I don't That's know. crazy, man. Why is Bob Ross here? Why is Bob Ross on this thing? Yeah, what the hell? Oh, um, the direct, the original director, Joshua Roff or Roffy, uh, did a documentary called Bob Ross Happy Accidents, Betrayal and Greed in 2021. Boy, did I get bucked. Well, no happy little vampires in this one. Okay. Let's we'll see what else you got over there, Christian. All right. That was a good one. I like that one. What a MacGyver. Uh, let's go with this one. I just saw this one during the show, actually. This came up, a late story here. A guy goes on a corporate retreat, and everyone else tries to kill him. Well, sort of. To find out more. Colorado man uh, left behind during office retreat survives night on mountain. This is quite the story. I guess he he must have pissed off some people. It's like leave Bob there. He's pissing yeah. us off. Screw he's, that guy. He's really he annoying. Telling when he those drinks. damn jokes. <laughs> Drinking heavily back there. What's going on. Kind of sounds like Jonathan Frank slowed down. He's just always constantly asking those questions. <laughs> You ever let a plumber into your house? <laughs> you ever seen the tallest man and you ever seen? Yeah, what's the tallest man you've ever seen? Leave Bob there. <laughs> Don't tell him. Leave him. A Colorado man survived a night on the mountain by himself while injured after being left behind by his coworkers during an office retreat, which <laughs> that is, this, that's shitty. That is shitty. Well. That is shitty. <laughs> <laughs> they they uh, kicked, kicked his knee and shoved him down the hill and ran. <laughs> Fuck him. Let, let's cheese it. Uh, while injured after being left behind by his coworkers during an office retreat, office retreat, which rescue officials pointed out may, be some, may lead to some awkward encounters at the office in the coming days and weeks. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> Just give him the keys to the private bathroom, and all is forgiven. Uh, Colorado uh, Chaffee County Search and Rescue shared the hiker's heroin ordeal in a Facebook post earlier this week, saying that at about 9 p.m. last Friday, it, it was activated for a report of an overdue hiker. The hiker was wearing all black on a standard route, from, uh, uh, route of Mount uh, Shavno, uh, Shav- uh, Shavno, Shavano, I don't Shavano, know. Shavano, a high mountain summit in the southern uh, Sawatch range of the Rocky Mountains. The hiker was part of a 15-person group that embarked on the office hiking retreat with one group completing the summit, uh, completing the summit attempts, and a separate group ascending to saddle and returning from there. When the subject summited at... 9.30 a.m. and turned to descend, he became disoriented, finding uh, finding belongings left in the boulder field to mark the descent by the previous group, having been picked up as they hiked down. Uh, in his initial attempts to descend, he found Wait, himself... So that says that they were leaving stuff on this boulder field to fo- find their way back down the, the, the mountain, and they were collecting it before he got there. Yep. They so- really fucked him. Yeah, it's like picking up your breadcrumbs along the way. Like, yep. Jerry's coming. Hurry up. <laughs> He's going to get lost. <laughs> He's always takes too long in the bathroom anyways. <laughs> this is best for everyone in the office. It's always in there microwaving tuna. <laughs> it's disgusting. Um, in, the, in his initial t- attempt to descend, he found himself in a steep, found himself in the steep boulder and scree field on the northeast slope towards the Shavano Lake. The group noted that the hiker sent to the location pin dropped to his co-worker who were already descending. The co-workers uh, then informed him that his route was wrong and instructed him to climb back up the slope again to regain the trail. Around 4.50 p.m., the hiker sent another location pin dropped to his co-worker 
as he nearly regained the ridge between Mount Shavo and another peak head trail, or trailhead. Top of Gauche. Uh, shortly after the hikers sent his location, a storm swept through the area with freezing rain and high winds, prompting the hikers to become disoriented and again losing the cell signal. At that, at that point, his office coworkers were like, well, we tried, we got to go. After receiving a missing hiker alert at 9 p.m. that evening, the search and rescue deployed two teams and a drone pilot team worked as worked from the last known point on the ridge and were focused on clearing out uh, st- the standard route as the last known point, as well as Shavano Lake and Squaw Creek drainage. You don't want to hike there. This sounds deliberate. I mean, the guy's like... He gets turned around or something. There's a you know there's a rainstorm. He's sending pings from his phone to coworkers. There's like I don't know. Just you know keep going down. It's not saying where his coworkers were <laughs> in the office. I think they just left. Well, I got to beat traffic, Mike. This, this one came <laughs> in at three fifty. You know, it was the weekend. Three fifty is close know. to rush hour. Uh-huh. No, I think if we don't get out of here by four, we're going to get stuck in traffic. Uh, a medical rescue helicopter also assisted the team with the search. Despite flying several search patterns through the area, did not detect any source of artificial light apart from the, te- the search teams anywhere on the mountain. So they really uh, barely found this guy. Uh, so, uh, so excellent teamwork in response to non-existent te- to teamwork. Well done, one person wrote on Facebook. And the user wrote, 15 of you guys and none of you went back to help or or stuck with them? Wow. And then someone else echoed a similar sentiment on Facebook writing, so they not only left him behind in the first place while they summited, but then his coworkers let him go to the summit alone. Then they moved rock markers on their way back down. Wow, great team building experience. Glad he's okay. Hopefully, he finds a new job soon. Yeah, you, and you picked that out right away. The team moved the markers. Mm-hmm. So he, he this is this is um, um this is actionable. You can sue the shit out of these people. Fuck them. I th- I hope this guy sues for enough that everybody here loses their jobs and he is able to retire right now and he could buy a place on the mountain. Gotcha. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's a hell of a team-building exercise. Hey, let's go up there and kill Jerry. We did it on purpose to yeah. help you get uh, experience in survival scenarios. Next, the team, the next team-building exercise is going to be like skydiving. Yeah, I'll, I'll pack your chute for you. <laughs> Here you go, Bill. <laughs> let's, go, let's go spelunking. <laughs> don't worry. I, I tied the knot. It's fine. Your harness is good. <laughs> you don't need a flashlight. <laughs> I don't need a flash. I got two. It's fine. I got, I got two. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You can it. borrow mine. It's fine. Here. Oh, I dropped it. It's it's a solar. <laughs> It'll recharge it when you're down there. Just crank it. He's got a little crank on it. Yeah. Here's a match. Deal with it. Yes. I, how do you go back to the office and and like really trust your coworkers at, at that point? You can't. You, you you they're basically you're you're gonna go in there and think I'm gonna be headed by vampires. These guys are gonna be head me. Because they're vampires, they want me dead. Oh, they can invite him to that goth club there in Denver. <laughs> Bob, we're going to a goth club in Dayton, Ohio. Next team building exercise. You're going to love this one. <laughs> Have your birthday there. <laughs> we got pizza. <laughs> Not a goth club. All right, Crusher. One more. Let's do it. All right. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? I did just fall out of a coconut tree. All right. Uh, let's see. We got um, what we got here. We got uh, Microsoft Copilot AI blames a reporter for for the crimes that he covered. That's a funny uh, headline. We have a uh, Oakland, California firefighters using the jaw of, jaws of life to save a guy. They put the jaws down. Some dude steals them. Mm. Oh, really? Uh, let's see what do we got here. We got. Oh, um, uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? Let's go with this one. We covered the other half of this a while ago. So uh, every now and then it comes up. Bill Gates wants to uh, uh, block out the sun to stop climate change. It's his, it's his dream. And the joke is always uh, that it's uh, a, a reference to the uh, the 90s Simpsons episode where Mr. Burns has that plan and then um, block out the sun until they pay him. 
So presuming that that moves forward, here's a uh, company who's like, oh, you know what? Tell you what, we'll put giant mirrors up there and then we'll sell you sunlight. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, this sounds like a win-win here. New Startups wants to sell you sunlight after dark using mirrors. I'm upset by this. Uh, it's an interesting idea. Okay. Uh, the sunset and night fall soon, sooner and later to for each of us. But the startup wants to change that. California-based Reflect Orbitals has developed a way to sell sunlight after dark. Interesting idea. They could have used that to find that dude on the mountain. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, bring out the sun you, again. If you shine that 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 direct sunlight down right on the spot in the mart, it'd be like a, a giant magnifying glass burning ants. <laughs> <laughs> Set that guy on fire. We'll there he is. Fire. Oh, God. You'll find him. He'll be crispy, but he'll be there. He'll be found. Maybe that's how you check to see if he's actually a vampire. Hit him with yeah, the sun. This, vampires don't like the sun. <laughs> uh, Reflect Orbitals is building a space... space space mirrors to reflect sunlight onto solar panels at night. The goal is to maximize solar farms energy production. According to the official website, you can also book a spot of light for yourself. Ooh, you just, personal sun. Wow. Okay. So you can just kind of like beam it down to my house. That's kind mm -hmm. of, that's really going to mess with the plant life and animal life. Yeah, that's my son. I paid for it. Yeah, I guess I, I need it. I want it. What if you have a neighbor who's really proud of their garden? Oh, you hate that. Just shine it into your neighbors like all night. Like if you really <laughs> hate your neighbor as like, I can't get her to sleep. It's it's all day light. <laughs> Sun's out all the time. Uh, by the way, they do have, as you scroll down, there is a promo video from these guys if you want to run oh, that. Oh, cool, yeah. Let's, let's watch this video. It does look fun. It's an interesting concept. I'll give them that. I don't think it's realistic, but. It does sound like something a Bond villain would do. Yeah, I mean, let's see here. I guess somehow it's not loading on my, I'll have to load it on my Chrome. Let's load it up on Chrome. Come on, people. I'm trying to load it up on Chrome over here. Here we go. Big mirrors. Big mirrors and big altitude. This gigantic solar farm doesn't this make any power at night. And neither <laughs> will any of these, but we can change that. With control over sunlight, solar energy can power the world forever. The Russians launched a reflector satellite in the 1990s, and it worked. But we've come a long way since then. With simple satellites in the right constellation shining on existing solar farms, we can produce cheap electricity. After many design iterations, ground testing, drone testing, and talking to lots of customers, we had one last thing to build before moving on to space. The balloon test. And the sun is going to rise here. I see it, I see it, I see it. Oh, yeah. Dude, I can see the beam, too. Oh, we got a flash. All right, these are very noticeable spikes. Yeah, they're... Oh, there's Tristan standing in the sun. music for basically right on them. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, could they make that louder, maybe? <laughs> what a MacGyver. the heat, actually. <laughs> So they're up in a balloon and they're reflecting oh, yeah, sunlight yeah, onto yeah. like these solar panels on the back of this pickup truck, and it, I mean it's a proof of proof of concept, I, I suppose. Um, it's fascinating. Um, I do like the idea. They're not far away. Take this one step further. Um, have a mirror and a fr uh, 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 a Fresnel lens on the front of it, and then you can just cook people from space. Yeah. It's a weapon. And then it's a weapon, and there's nothing to leave behind. It's like, I don't know. It's got burned up. Spontaneous combustion. We need those machines. We need those machines. It's, uh, uh, yeah, very curious. Uh, this is actually kind of, uh, didn't they use this concept in Spies Like Us? 
uh, where they had giant space mirrors that reflected the sunlight in order to take out incoming ICBMs? Mm, no, they had a, uh, if you recall, there was a um, uh, giant laser they used to bounce it off of satellites. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. it missed. And they yeah. were like, whoops. And they but, were like, what do you do? And he's like, we're going to just stay here for 30 years. But in Superman 4, they used the power of the sun. They captured that and they made Superman. The yeah, sun baby. The sun baby, yeah. Yeah. And then they you threw know? all the nuclear weapons into the sun. Yeah. Hmm. By the way, why didn't Superman just charge cities to take care of their trash and throw it in the space? It's good business. Very good business model. Dude, be rich as hell. So, yeah, watch out for this startup to pair with uh, Bill Gates, who will block out the sun, and then these guys will sell it back to you. Yeah, yeah and then they're just going to maneuver right around it. They'll go right around his... No, I think they're going to be working together. You think so? Yeah. He'll turn off the sun to stop climate change, and then these guys will sell you whatever sun you can afford. It, it, it is. Like, you invest in both companies is a win-win. Let's do it. You grow stuff, Mike. What What if the, the you got basically your utility company sent you a bill for how much sun you were using? Yeah. They're trying to. Someone out there is thinking about this. Yeah, they want to charge me for carbon and sun. I ain't got that kind of money. You're using electricity, oh. gas, and sun. I don't know about this. What are you doing over there? Oh, man. Well, thank you, everyone, for hanging out on this Wednesday night. You can go to obdmpod.com, and there's links there to support the show. Why are you talking like that? I don't know. I'm a little, I'm a little tired, and I'm just trying to punch up the energy at the end of the show here. <laughs> Uh, I was on the uh, the podcast, the the Third Rail podcast, uh, this past Friday, and I'll see if I can post that. To, uh, I think you can just look up Third Rail podcast up there. If not, I'll post up the audio uh, to Patreon here tomorrow, so you guys can check that out. Uh, I'm not going to touch that one. But, uh, yeah, the Third Rail. <laughs> and hopefully Joe will be back in a big way on Saturday. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't know if we learned anything. talk about on Third Rail? Uh, we talked about uh, ley lines, aliens, and uh, new technology. Hmm. It's right like up a, your alley. It's like a, a more focused version of Union of the Unwanted. And you guys brought up ley lines. Was it two episodes? Ago? Yeah, no, yeah, we did. <laughs> I don't know much right about there. it. Like I keep bringing them up, and I don't, I, I don't know why. I still subscribe to the Leyline Dumb and Chuck E. Cheese I, arrangement. I like that idea. I need to get. I need to get a definitive Leyline map, one that everyone agrees upon, and then see. It's if, easy. Just go to Google Maps, search for Chuck E. Cheese locations. There's all your nexus points. Yeah. Okay. You're right. I, I assume. Oh, thank you, Cratchit. Thank you, everyone. Shop Lagoo. Keep watching the skis. Those guys are blocking out the sun up there. Oh, fuck. I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> That's about all. Shablagu. Well, thank you, everyone. Let's conclude and uh, onward. Thanks so much. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. All right. It's just a black and decker.